Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity with me, Bring It On. Off camera, I decided to turn this on to show personality and reputation during conversation because it's not always easy to tell what the inflection is via text. And it's hard to roleplay if you don't know what the intent is behind the words you choose. For instance, last episode, when we confronted the Glyphothans, the athletics option to rush in and kill the guy before he could act, I think could be seen as either aggressive or rational. So just to play it safe, I'll have that turned on. That doesn't mean I'll always default to my paladin's favorite dispositions. I'm still going to roleplay. I just want to know what the words mean or how they'll be taken mm. when I select them. Let's go ahead and go deeper into this ruin and see what trouble we can find ourselves in. A trembling, sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Knobby elbows and thin ribs show through its scaly flesh, but you recognize it as a Zarip. It watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged sighs. Raise your arms and stand still. The creature cocks its head and approaches you, a soft clicking sound emanating from the back of its throat. The creature sniffs around you and finds nothing of interest. It steps back and resumes its defensive posture. It's okay. I won't hurt you. The Zarp recoils, fingers still wrapped tightly around its spear. Now we just read that, and that. Slowly back away. The Zarp watches you warily as you go. Hmm. Well, it didn't have to be this way. Anguithin Relief Gem. This brilliant blue gem has been sculpted to look like an eye. And a tattered journal. The small folio is torn in several places, and blood is soaked into several of the sheets. One well, later entry is still legible, however. I can't believe my luck. A few rounds of dice, and I've got my hands on a genuine Anguithin artifact. The fellow who had it said it was pretty nothing it was a pretty nothing, as far as he's concerned. He's not willing to go digging in some ruins. But if he's right about this gem leading it to a hidden treasure, that's worth sneaking past a few painted elves. I had to kill Aunt Liss in the morning. It's just a matter of finding this relief he was talking about. Hmm. Yeah. That looks weak. Could be a shortcut. A crack runs along this wall from floor to ceiling. A light gust of air passes through it. We'll try testing it first and push on the wall. Despite the damage, the stone looks heavy and solid. I think she has more might than I do. So, send Kalisha. Kalisha pushes with all her might. The crack begins to spread. Finally, the ancient masonry gives way. The wall crashes down, revealing a circular room ahead. Required might 16. I have 16 might, so I could yeah. have done that too. Oh, there is more than one.
Right. Nice and slow. Also, while I'm thinking about it, let's go and equip these. Huh? Fresh air in here. I think we found an exit. Sounds like the storm path, too. Alright, so spiders are not immune to trip. It's good yeah. to know. On these? Oh. Hmm. Well, once I trigger it, it deactivates. Huh. Let's uh, circle back around and check that out from the other side. Look suspicious. Let's be careful. You couldn't have mentioned that on the other side. Those symbols, just like the tiles. A symbol of pattern circle of a pattern circle is inscribed on this pillar. And let brazier sits at its base. It could be lit if you had the means. Use the torch to light the brazier. Flames kindle swiftly in the brazier. Why don't they weigh upwards? Mural must be ancient, yet the colors are still bright and vivid. It shows a procession of Ingwithans from all the Kith races Amoa, Elf, Orlin, Dwarf, and Human. They walk among pillars similar to the ones that span this chamber, each one topped with a flame. Huh. Where'd that slime come from? Viscous and oily, the smut clings to anything it touches. A viscous slick of something dark and tar-like runs down this wall. The shapes and bulges in the ooze suggest that something lies beneath it. You can't tell what. Well, hopefully I don't need that water for the tea that's supposed to make with the berries. You rinse the ooze away, revealing an intricate relief of a man's face. The sunburst surrounding it has chipped away in places, but the details of his head, 
from the tight curls of hair to the ridges of his pointed ears, still showcase remarkable craftsmanship. One eye socket is empty. A gem fills the other. Place a gem in the eye socket. The chamber begins to rumble, stray rocks dancing across the tile floor. Finally, a large section of the wall gives way. The piece of Adra. An organic material crystalline in structure, but shell like in substance. Adra can be found growing up through the ground in veins in many parts of Eora. Easy to carve and manipulate. It is a favorite of jewelers as a semi-precious stone. It is often cut more intricately and beautifully than other gems. A minor cloak of protection gives us plus 5 to fortitude reflex and will. Capes and cloaks can be worn for protection from the elements and from prying eyes alike. Many are woven with spells to provide additional defense or abilities. Yeah. Stay quiet. Well, sweet. Also, I never read what Fortitude does during character creation. The Fortitude resists attacks on the eternal physical systems of the character. Examples are poison, disease, etc. It is defined by the character's class, level, might, and constitution, but can also be influenced by other effects. It's important because we have a lot of fortitude. Yeah. So by lighting those pillars, check something with this wall. Stay quiet. We cleared a path through this tile trap. Mm. What you need? Stay quiet. Stay quiet. Huh? Nice and slow. Make sure that I'll engage with my main character before she runs in. Sure. Alright, nothing to it. Bats as large as chickens are strung in the web. Looks like we're clear to leave.
Four figures stand before an otherworldly apparatus, an ancient structure of chiseled adra and metallic veins, ominous and looming like a silent observer. Standing motionless in their midst is what appears to be a human body, colorless as stone or ash. The other figures gaze upon it in what might be contemplation. From your vantage point, you are well obscured from their view. The figure closest to the machine stands out among them. A thick gray beard frames a face otherwise hidden beneath a metallic mask. His faded robes are embroidered with a runic language, unlike anything you have ever seen. He wears a strange black headdress, with two protrusions that jut out like the wings of some malevolent creature. Oathbinder, bear witness, and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was, and regard it among your favored. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. He addresses the petrified body. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother in the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw? Step forth and be assured of the great worth of your life's course. Man passes his gaze over the other standing around him. He looks each in the eye in turn. For an instant, the apparatus goes quiet and the air is still. Then all at once, it erupts with a concussive surge. Light floods your vision, and you're knocked to the ground. Your head snaps back as you land, pain wells into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into the black, unconscious void. You open your eyes to a different place, another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with adra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber is unweathered. At the far end is a great pillar of Adra. At the far end, a great pillar of Adra pierces the floor from below. Its shimmering texture gives the illusion of boundless depth. Encircling the pillar is an apparatus much like the one you've just seen, but immense and multifaceted and inter intertwined. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they seem to exist before you think them, and they're all questions. Pressing questions. Troubling questions. Questions that must be answered or... or... At the base of the pillar now, you see a man with a thick gray beard and ceremonial robe, crowned with a strange ornamental headdress. You know this man. You are walking towards him now, at a pace that is hurried while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all, and the question spins madly in your mind. You awaken to find your malaise is broken, only to be replaced with something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing, like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. Movement flits through your periphery, but when you turn to look, you see no sign of whatever it was. You find your gaze regularly darting this way and that, an involuntary paranoid tick. If this is a sickness, it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long. The figures of the machine stand frozen in place, flesh and blood replaced by cinders and ash. The man who led them is nowhere to be seen. You find Kalisha lying prostrate a short distance away, blood pulled beneath her head. No breath escapes her lips. You are alone and far from help. The Gilded Veil may be your best hope of receiving treatment before things get worse. Hmm. Alright, so we leveled up uh, skills. 
Allow your character to perform specialized actions like scouting, detecting traps, picking locks, or reading scrolls. It can also be used to overcome obstacles in conversations and scripted interactions. Skills will advance as your characters gain level, but items and other bonuses can also increase skills. Let's go and read these. A stealth allows characters of any class to attempt to avoid being seen or heard. It is used automatically whenever the character is in scouting mode. The higher the character's skill, the closer they can get to enemies before being detected. Athletics. Uh, we read this during character creation. Oh, but there's more to it. Adventuring is tiring work. In addition to the hazards of mortal combat, <laughs> adventurers have walls to climb, rivers to cross, and pits to leap over. Once per encounter, characters with athletics can use the second wind ability to recover lost endurance. A higher athletic score increases the effects of second wind. Conversations and scripted interactions. Athletics is used for physical feats like climbing, swimming, and jumping. Lore presents a character's accumulated miscellaneous knowledge and trivia, often of occult or esoteric topics. Outside of conversations and scripted interactions, lore is used to activate scrolls. Higher lore values allow the character to use higher level scrolls. Mechanics. Traps and locks can be a problem for even the toughest adventurers, draining their resources and maiming or killing those who are unfortunate enough to trigger an unseen floor plate. Mechanic skill makes it easier to open locks and find and disable traps. Additionally, any character can use a mechanic skill to place traps of their own. The higher the mechanic skill, the more accurate the trap. In conversations and scripted interactions, Mechanics can be used to activate or disable a variety of machines. In Survival. Survival allows characters to choose from a variety of long-term bonuses each time they camp. The first six ranks grant the following bonuses. 1. Damage Reduction. 2. Received Healing Multiplier. 3. Bonus Movement. 4. Accuracy Bonus versus Creature Type. 5. Increased Consumable Duration. and 6. Bonus Damage versus Flanked Enemies. After the 6th rank, the previously earned bonuses become more powerful in the same order they were received. Survival can also be used in conversations and scripted interactions that involve wilderness challenges or specialized information about nature. Right, so we have a few choices here. You could do Intense Flames. I might just go for Weapon Focus. I believe it's Soldier that I want. Yeah, for Warhammer. I'm going to focus more on DPS with this guy. He's still going to use a shield for the most part because Warhammers are typically one-handed. But if I want to swap to a Greatsword or a Pike, I can. I know some people don't like grabbing Weapon Focus early on because it kind of limits what equipment you should use. I like doing it because it makes sure all my companions stay in their lanes. It makes it easier to select equipment for them. I usually have an idea of what I want my characters to use when starting out. So I might go ahead and select this. I'm going to put a lot of... Uh, Focus on my uh, Flames of Devotion. Probably get Sign of Flame at some point as well. Let's go ahead and grab this. Weapon Focus Soldier. Trains a character in the use of the Greatsword, Pike, Warhammer, Arbalist, and Archibus. Gaining accuracy with all weapons of those types. So against Weapon Focus Soldier, it's a passive. And plus it's accuracy to all those weapon types.
But we have a couple of afflictions here. Severe burn, minus two dexterity, and minus eight damage reduction versus burn. The major fatigue, minus 20 accuracy, and minus 25% maximum endurance. This massive structure is formed of stone, adra, and copper, and covered in strange glyphs. The air around it vibrates with an unusual energy. You don't say. Alright, to Veilwood. Go ahead and rest then. Oh, there's a ghost there. Or a specter, apparition, phantom. Hallucination. Did I say spirit? Spirit. Oh, there's another one. Can't loot that body. Let's stick to this side of the river for now. You do not want a piece of this, buddy. Maybe you do. I can't let any of my hits. Right, new helmet. Let's see how that looks compared to my current. It matches a little better, I think. A touch more salt. How long does it take to make some darn stew? Don't rush me. You have to let the meat absorb the flavor. I'll be absorbing the sharp end of my dagger if you don't hurry it up. Alright, we'll deal with that next time. I don't want to get involved quite yet. Go back this way first. Shatter pieces of a crate are strewn across the dirt, along with a few muddy vegetables. Oh, there's more than one. Ah, 
Alright, come on, take him out. Time. One more hit. Perfect. Let's go. Well, maybe not perfect. The struts and supports are large enough to be the ribs and vertebrae of a dragon. Alright, let's head back down this way and we'll confront these bandits in the next one. I don't know how much dialogue there's going to be. Alright, I'm gonna call it here. Our next episode, we'll see about, I guess, saving Tenfrith. Seems like he's being uh, forced to cook under duress. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.